Hello and welcome to this video and to the first book review book wrap up thingy of 2024. I have a lot to talk to you about. It's amazing what not being at work can do and also I've decided to reread some of the books from my shelves and I've started with those that I've read when I was a much younger child so they're shorter books. So I actually read 14 books in January so I better get a move on and get talking to you about it. So the first five books essentially that I read in January were all of the Heartstopper series. So this is just number five because this is the newest one um, and the one I hadn't read so I just thought I'd hold this one up. But I read volumes one to five all on the 1st of January. That's how I started my year which was a good way of doing it. I have spoken about this series in a past book review so I'll try and find it and link that up there for you. Uh, this is following Nick and Charlie and their sort of love story when they meet and throughout. I give all of these a 4.5 star which actually is a little increase on last time because I didn't particularly enjoy number four last time but this time I found it much better. These are graphic novels so they don't take that long to read hence why I could read all five in a day. Um, but number five uh, is the newest one. I think there's going to be one more and that's the end of the series. Uh, and this is looking much more at uh, Nick and Charlie's relationship and them deciding and exploring whether they would like to have sex and things like that. It's sort of taking their relationship to the next stage and both their feelings on it and that kind of thing. I the thing I enjoy most about these is how natural the relationship is. It's got those sort of really awkward moments that most relationships or new relationships have, certainly from my experience, and those sort of moments where you get really nervous and whatever and you're like why am I nervous like with this person? Um and it's all portrayed really well and I do just like the drawing style and the way that it is and how easy they are to follow in terms of the story. Graphic novels is not something I read a lot of so this is sort of my only dip into that world um, and it is one that I enjoy a lot. Saying that though I do find that with a graphic novel I kind of can't really get completely absorbed as I can in a full fleshed out prose book which is why these can't get five star for me. Um, cause because as much as I love them and as much as I love the relationship that Nick and Charlie have and all of the characters in the this world, I can't quite connect as well as I can to something written. Um, so they're never going to be able to get that five star from me because of that. Enjoyed my read of the Heartstopper series um, again and looking forward to the last one coming out. Um, so those were the graphic novels by Alice Oseman. Recommend. So the next book that I went on to was The Christie Affair by Nina de Gramont. Hopefully I'm pronouncing her name correctly. This is a book looking at the period of time where Agatha Christie goes missing for how many days was it? For 11 days. I picked this up from one of those free bookshelves that you get on holidays and stuff. So I actually picked this up in Georgetown in the Bahamas um, because it sounded interesting although slightly outside of my normal comfort read so I was a bit daunted going into this because historical fiction and stuff is not necessarily one that I gravitate towards but there was something about the blurb of this that intrigued me enough to bring it home essentially. Um, and I was surprised about how much I enjoyed it actually so I gave this four stars which as I said I wasn't expecting I thought that I'd give it a go I do like to push myself outside my comfort zone occasionally um, so I thought I'd give it a go and see where it was and actually I really enjoyed it but saying that it's not really looking necessarily at Agatha Christie I think this is a bit deceptive we're looking more at Nan who is the mistress of Agatha Christie's husband Archie and you know forms part of the reason why she does disappear for a little while but really we're looking at Nan's life and 
the events that led to that rather than Agatha Christie herself. And to be fair, Nan's life is not, it's quite tragic. Um, there are definite trigger warnings in this for suicide, death, uh, war. Uh, a lot of this is based in those Irish uh, unmarried mothers places. So if I just say that, you probably know what I mean. Um, so definitely check out those warnings if it's something that you might not want to read about. So I went into this thinking it was just going to be a standard historical fiction. It actually turned out to be more of a mystery, which I enjoyed, although thought parts of it were a little farcical, but I did like the way it all came together. Um, I did guess some of it, but not all of it, which is always a good way of going into it. I don't know how historically accurate this book is. Uh, part of me thinks it's all completely made up, um, but I would recommend uh, picking it up if you see it. However, my copy is so badly looked after. I have pages falling out of this. Um, so Kathleen, who I know about because she had a plane ticket in here, uh, you don't look after your books very well and I'm disappointed because I probably would have kept it, but because it's in such poor condition. I don't even think I can send this to a charity shop it might actually have to go in a bin, which pains my book-loving heart. But yes, would recommend The Christie Affair by Nina de Gramont. So as I said, I then went on to, I'm trying to sort of read a new book and then reread a book. So the first one that I reread this month, other than The Heartstoppers, was Remember Me to Harold Square by Paula Danzinger. Uh, this is a book that I remember reading maybe when I was like 11, 12-ish maybe a little older I don't know and we are following what's her name Kendra her little brother and then there is a family friend their son comes to stay with them for the summer in New York and the parents set them a scavenger hunt that they have to complete um, and the prize of that is to then get a trip to the UK so to England so they really want to do said scavenger hunt when I was younger and I read this I remember it being more of a romance it's not really Kendra and Frank I believe his name is is the the boy that comes to stay with them I remember that being like a big romance not particularly there is an element of it in that but actually the scavenger hunt is the main thing and I really enjoyed it and I enjoyed having a look around New York with them um and again I haven't been to New York the first time I'd read this so it's sort of it it made me think of places that I wanted to go when I eventually went and although this book is now quite old it was written in the 90s or 80s for this one 1988 so obviously some of the references probably aren't you know up there anymore but I did enjoy it and I would I do plan on keeping hold of this because I think it might be a fun one for my daughter to read at some point if she ever wants to. So I read that one, so that was Remember Me to Harold Square, um, and instead of going straight into a new book I read the sequel which is Thames Doesn't Rhyme with James, again by Paula Danzinger. This follows the same group um, and this is their trip to London that they win for completing the scavenger hunt in this. Spoilers. I didn't like this one as much and I probably won't keep hold of this one because I didn't like the relationship between Kendra and Frank. So this is the one where they're more of a couple and I didn't like the way that Frank treated Kendra. Um, he's very dismissive of her opinions of what she wants to do and it has to sort of all be about him and I wasn't very comfortable with that one. So Kendra is essentially told not to like the things that she likes and I that didn't sit well with me. I also think the scavenger hunt in London, obviously I, I lived there for a while so I know London relatively well. I didn't think it was very realistic. They were asked to go to places like Hampton Court which is quite a distance outside London within like a week to do all of this stuff. It was never going to be possible. So I don't know what the parents and the aunt who lives in London were thinking when they set the scavenger hunt for this book. Uh, they are also joined by some more people. Um, so it's not just Kendra, her brother and Frank that go on the scavenger hunt. And I just think that's too many extra people and it sort of lost the charm of 
the first the first book um so not my favorite uh and i probably won't keep the sequel you don't need to read the sequel so yeah disappointing with that one because i remember it being better um than it actually was so that was thames doesn't rhyme with james by paula danzinger i was struggling to pick which book to read so i used a random letter generator which gave me b so i ended up with lessons in chemistry by bonnie garmus as my choice for that one uh this again has been all over the internet um for quite some time i'm always a bit late to the party with these things uh but we are again in history we're more in the 50s 60s for this one and we're following elizabeth zott who is a chemist a scientist but because she's a woman they don't really let her um so she ends up so she ends up being the host of a cooking show but she takes uh, her own sort of spin on it uh, there's a lot more to this book than that um and again i was very pleasantly surprised with how much i enjoyed this book and this one was a 4.5 star for me along with the heartstopper series this month I really liked Elizabeth Zott as a character. I really like the strength that she's shown. She goes through a lot of troubling times. She's very resilient and makes her way through it all. And she has so much perseverance in, I'm a scientist and this is what I'm going to do. My gender doesn't matter about it. And she really does pursue her dream and that kind of thing and what she wants to do um she has very much a how do i say this without swearing sod it kind of attitude um which i enjoyed reading um, and this is a very sort of feminist kind of book and showing that we can do anything because we can the way it's told there are quite a lot of points of view in this book which are not always clearly labeled but i didn't find that at all distracting or confusing i actually quite liked it especially when we got the opinion of the dog that was that was a highlight so i i actually appreciated the way that it was written i really liked bonnie garmus's writing i would look for other things that she has written or will be writing in the future um and again as i said earlier historical fiction is not really my my bag but i've actually really enjoyed it this month so may maybe it is um and uh, really glad that I've actually picked this up and I've now essentially told my mum that she has to read it straight away because I enjoyed it so much. Um, just as an FYI, um, there is a rape scene in the first 20 pages of this book which took me by surprise. Um, I didn't see that coming, I didn't anticipate it. Um, so if it's not something that you want to read about then just bear that in mind that it is very very early on in this book um, but there are trigger warnings for various other things so death of the partner, suicide, misogyny obviously um, so yeah again along with the Christie Affair and most books to be honest um, just be mindful when you pick them up that there might be some topics that you don't want to read about in them uh, the reason why i couldn't give this book five stars is because i wasn't too keen on the ending um i didn't think it was elizabeth zott focused enough for me um and that's why i couldn't give it the five but yes very much enjoyed this book it was actually my favorite of the month um so would highly recommend if you haven't already and most of you probably have but if you haven't already would highly recommend Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. Uh, so my next reread was Bad Dreams by Anne Fine. I think I got this book confused with another one because it did not follow the story I thought it was. So there we go. And I have to say I wasn't a very big fan. Where this was probably my favourite read of the month, this was probably my least favourite read of the month. Um, and again is one that I'm going to be passing on to the world and someone else can, can have this copy of of this book i mean it is a nice hardback copy of it but i i didn't particularly gel with the story so we're not going to keep it and i think part of my problem and maybe it's because i'm not the target audience for it but i feel like it needed fleshing out a bit more i feel like there wasn't really much story in it and 
although they were trying to, it didn't really come across. So we're following, I can't remember any character names, Mel, who is like the class bookworm and sort of slight loner. And she is told that she has to look after the new girl Imogen, who is a bit strange and people feel very uneasy around Imogen. And then Mel decides to essentially work out why. Um, which you'd think would be quite a good storyline, but I don't know, there was something about it that just didn't hit right. And I wasn't keen on the way that this ended either. I guess the one sort of bonus of it is that you can be a book-loving loner and still be incredibly happy, which I think is a good thing to uh, promote. Uh, that's what my life is now, so there we go. Bad Dreams by Anne Fine, not my favourite. Uh, I then got M as my letter on my random will. So I decided to go with the Beauty and the Beast, um, and this is the Mina Lima version, although it's originally written by Gabrielle Suzanne Barbaudi, oh, I'm not gonna be able to pronounce that. Someone in France a very long time ago. I have had my eye on a sort of Mina Lima version of something for a long time because I think the books are very, very pretty and I wanted to give them a go. They are illustrated really well and they're supposed to have like interactive elements to them, which sort of aid the story. Uh, I would say though, I did sort of expect a little bit more from it in that respect. Um, if I can find, for example, this is one of the interactive elements and it is just a spinning wheel which I don't know what I expected and what I expected more of, but they didn't seem to add anything to it, although I did quite like having them there. Does that make sense? I don't know. The actual story of Beauty and the Beast, this version of it, I found very confusing. Um, I love the Disney film. It's my favourite Disney film. Uh, I have to say I much prefer the Disney film. It's much more fun. It's much more cohesive. It makes much more sense. I just found this very confusing. Obviously it's not a spoiler. He turns into the prince about halfway through this book. And then there's like three chapters of people explaining why he was in there. And one of them is called The Fairy Reveals All. Is that it? Yeah, The Fairy Reveals All. I have no idea really what the fairy was revealing. Uh, I think I understood what she was getting at. But actually I don't know so I don't think she did a very good job at revealing what was going on. Um, I will be keeping it because it's such a pretty book, but I don't think I'll be reading Beauty and the Beast again because, yeah, it just wasn't it wasn't up there with the Disney film, I'm afraid, but very glad to have a Mina Lima in my life. Right, I ran out of space on my memory card. If I've moved at all, apologies. And now I've lost all my notes. If you saw the vlog, um, you saw why I picked the next book, which was Black Buck by... Matteo Askaripal. Really should have worked out how to uh, pronounce these surnames before filming this. I did know once upon a time how you do it, but there we go. Um, so I read Black Buck. Uh, this is following our main character, Darren. He is a black man working in Starbucks at the bottom of a big like tower with lots of tech startups and things. Um, and he manages to convince one of the big wigs in one of the companies um, to give him a job as a sales rep and it goes from there and his life in that world um, as a black man. Uh, it also throws in some sort of sales guide extracts and stuff slash sort of self-helpy kind of things which is again the reason why I was intrigued by it because I'm like how can you combine fiction with a sales guide slash self-help and again I didn't pay for this I found it in a tube station uh, and actually I thought the way of writing it and the way of actually combining the things worked quite well there are I don't know if I'm gonna be able to find any now that I'm looking for them there we go you can see that page at the bottom here where there's like the bold print um that's where they're doing their sort of sales manual self-help bit and then the rest of it is the story um and it's written as 
though it's a sort of memoir of that period of time. Uh, if you saw my December or November, I can't remember which one, uh, wrap up with an absolutely remarkable thing. It's a similar kind of writing style to that with the added element. However, I wasn't hugely enamoured by this book. I didn't like any of the characters in it, which is a problem. Um, I didn't feel that Darren, aka Buck, was nice enough, was kind enough, was knowledgeable enough to be able to be giving that kind of advice. And yeah, no, they were just all kind of unsavoury characters that I wasn't really into. This book obviously has a heavy theme of racism to it. He is a black man going into a tech startup and he is the only black man there and there is a lot of tokenism and things like that that's happening with that. But also this book has an awful lot of ableism which I wasn't expecting um, where they take the mickey out of some guy with Tourette's a lot and all of that kind of thing. So some of that wasn't particularly nice to read. It's obviously quite misogynistic and essentially the whole the whole thing that they're working in is just very toxic and I wasn't too keen on reading about that kind of life. It does try and have a decent message to it in that people can be made to feel less than but they can still achieve um, but I just think because of the way the characters are and the way that the book is that sort of gets lost a lot and actually it was just not a very nice place or yeah it just didn't work for me. I probably won't be venturing to this author again. I thought the book went in some strange directions in places uh, although it was a pleasant enough easy enough time to read it I just didn't get a lot from it and uh, I gave this I think three three and a half stars at most so yeah that's Black Buck for you. I thought about whether to reread or to go into a new book. I decided to go to a new book because I fancied it. The Alma Generator gave me L so I read The Fine Print by Lauren Asher which I got the entire series for Christmas so I thought we'd give the first one a go. As I said earlier, well known book, lots of people have read it, you probably know what it's about, I'm always late to these things. Uh, but this is book one in the Dreamland Billionaires series. We're following Rowan, who is the youngest of the brothers. Each brother is given a task by their granddad in the will so that they can earn their share of the company, essentially. And Rowan is tasked to go to Dreamland, which is essentially Disney theme parks, and work out how to make it better. And in doing that, he meets Zara, um, and obviously from there a romance takes place. I enjoyed this book, I gave it four stars. Uh, there were obvious flaws and things in it and uh, but on the whole I enjoyed the romance between Rowan and Zara. I thought it was a touch insta, you know, attraction but I did feel it sort of developed a bit um, and it did look at both of their sort of insecurities quite well. Um, I liked the character Zara in particular um, and obviously the setting is great because it's a theme park. Um, yes it is heavily Disney and you can tell it's Disney but I wouldn't go into it going it's a Disney romance because it's not. It's a theme park romance which is fun and I like the setting. I would have liked there to be a bore of the theme park stuff. One thing about their relationship though, once they got into the physical side of things um, I didn't feel like the smut in this really added anything and I also didn't like how it changed their relationship and Rowan became way too possessive for my liking in it. So that's sort of why it stuck at a four because as much as I enjoyed the story I was like meh, he, he's a bit much for me, that's not gonna work. Uh, I wouldn't promote that kind of behaviour. Um, and throughout all of it Zara is like no to it until they fall into bed with each other so yeah uh, the other reason why it won't get a five star from me is there are too many breakups in this book um I know romances have that third act breakup 
they all do it it kind of frustrates me but i get why they do it because you know you got a driver story this had a few too many and a few too many times again that it's like i'm not going to trust him and then obviously it happens so it's not my favorite romance ever but i did very much enjoy the uh storyline of it as i said the characters the romance the setting did make it for me um there were just a few bits that didn't sit quite so well i mean it's sort of a grumpy sunshine trope which i enjoy um but yeah four stars uh enjoyable would recommend uh looking forward to getting to the others in the series because i know that we move to different aspects of this uh, company and different tasks that the brothers have to do um so yeah that's the fine print by lauren asher and then the last book that i read in january um was the adventures of the worst witch by jill murphy this is a bind up of the first three books so the worst witch the worst witch strikes again and a bad spell for the worst witch uh, this obviously follows Mildred Hubble as she goes to Cattle Academy um, and it's following her first three terms um, in that place and I don't know why because I don't even think I read it very much as a child apparently this cost 4 99 this book bargain I don't think I read it that often as a child anyway but there was sort of an element of nostalgia to me for this book for me uh, which I did enjoy however how are these three separate books there's like no story in any of them the th the second book is like 80 pages and nothing like there is one thing that happens in it but how is it actually a novel um would recommend a bind up of more than one book uh, if you're doing the worst witch so they're very very easy to read uh they've also got some very fun illustrations which i enjoyed a lot and I'm pretty sure there are more worse witch books so I would be intrigued to read more of them I am going to keep it I do think it is a world worth exploring if you're a younger reader I do think it might be something that again my daughter might enjoy I just struggle to see it's probably because I read adult books now uh, where sometimes there is too much story in them that you go how is that a book but yeah enjoyable probably of its time slightly uh do feel for mildred a bit because actually a lot of the things that happen are not really her fault so maybe she's not the worst witch um but yeah enjoyable and really quick to read so that's the adventures of the worst witch by jill murphy so there you go there are the big stack of books that i read in january uh february who knows i'm i'm due to give birth i don't know what's going to happen with reading i've decided to random number generate my entire tbr so that's including the books on my kindle which there are a lot of so we're at like 166 books or something so we could be going in some very strange directions so if you're interested in that do click on the subscribe button and see what comes up if you have any comments about the books I've read this month please put them in the box below and give this video a like if you've enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Bye!